This is NewHampshireCrossCountry.com, powered by Runner's Alley. This meet brought to you by Demerit Hill Farms, which is exactly where we find ourselves now. Oyster River's home course does run right through this apple orchard. They've got more than just apples here though. Taking a look at this, it is a dual meet. Cobrown Oyster River, we've got a rivalry going on right here. First meet of the season for all of these runners. Yesterday was the first day we could have any runners in the state. I know Messinic had a, a meet yesterday. Just had the girls finish up. Got to see how this wave start works. Basically, each course will have a, a starting line that can hold so many runners safely. Here at Demerit Hill, we have 14 runners on the line, which means we're gonna see seven from Cobrown, Brown, seven from Oyster River. And those top seven for each team, Cole Brown, we have Aiden Cox, Lars Hogney, Jamie Lano, Wyatt Mackey, Logan Mihalik, Carter Sylvester, Luke Kazik. Oyster River side of things, we've got Rowan Brown, Owen Fleischer, John Gorski, Zachary Jones, Dylan Labonte, Andrew O'Brien, Andy O'Brien, I guess, uh, and Keen Swice. Between the 14, we only have one freshman here on Cole Brown side, so we can start looking at how these teams fared last year. Now with the dual meet early season, all bets are off, especially considering the conditions coming into it. Spring, they didn't have an organized season. Summer, no organized season. Fall, starting a little bit late. Normally, this is when we'd have our Bobcat Invitational. That's invite time, and this is their first meet of the season. So all bets are off, but last year at D2s, Cole Brown did get first place, Oyster River right behind at second. So we can see a number of reasons why these teams like going head to head. Cole Brown last year graduated one senior, whereas Oyster River lost two of their top five and four overall. So their team has quite a different makeup to it. Oyster River has run this before. The Cole Brown boys team has not. I know at least a couple members of it have uh, been spotted here once or twice running around getting used to all these hills as we do have a very challenging course here today. Pretty much everything has an incline to it, up or down, really not a whole lot of flats and what does appear flat does have incline to it as well. Looks like we're pretty close to starting now. Our second race of today. Girls race finished up with Addison Cox coming very close to a course record, but shy of Chloe Trudell's record set last year, this weekend last year. Boys record, probably set up that same meet unofficially, as far as I know. My guess is it was. Last year it would have been, uh, I believe Colin Donnelly from Winniconnick getting 16.43 on this course. Top returner from that meet would be from Oyster River, Andy O'Brien, who got fifth at 17.06. He's looking to improve on that mark today. And again, those times early season, it shows you how hard this course can be when you compare it to some other courses as we progress through the season. Looks like Oyster River boys head coach, Scott McGrath is in the middle of the field giving the gentlemen some final instructions before we have wave one take off. Again, we've got a number of waves. I believe boys race has four different waves separated by 15 seconds each. In the girls race, we saw a little bit of overlap near the end of it. Can anticipate the same occurring in this one. All runners have those bib numbers, which makes it a little bit easier at the end to sort out who belongs in which wave. That way that time can get subtracted from them. Conditions today are absolutely beautiful for running. Temperature in the high 40s, low 50s. All week it's been 60s and 70s, so this is a nice treat for these runners. Not a cloud in the sky, but the sun isn't beating down hard enough where it's gonna have a negative impact on them. Of course, as we can see here, 
starts as this uphill. Then they'll run into the woods, going through a woods loop up and down before coming back onto this field. And the first wave is getting ready. And they're off. 2020 dual meet, Oyster River, Cole Brown. Boys, wave one coming at us. All fighting to get to that top spot. See who starts the strongest with it. Wave two taking off, we just heard as well. Getting that 15 second difference as it does. Look like we have a very tight pack right now. I see a Kazik out in front with an O'Brien on his shoulder. Wyatt is out there as well. Almost looks like they're all paired off. This should be a very close race up front. A lot of those guys know each other very, very well. Wave two. Similar to what we saw in wave one. Oyster River, Cole Brown kind of paired off for that leading spot. Wave three taken up the hill. And in the distance, we also see wave four. These boys are off. Climbing this hill is not the easiest way to start a race. See those arms pumping, getting those knees up. And in the background, we get to witness the Merritt Hill Farms, an absolutely gorgeous apple orchard here in Lee, New Hampshire. A lot of these runners, this might be their first race ever. And it's a tough one for them. We'll check out how it's going at the one mile. And we've got our leaders coming around now. Looks like Cox and Kazik out front for Cole Brown. This time is right on pace with last year's record. They're coming into the one mile. Boys opting to use the grass where they can. Kazik, Cox, O'Brien, Mackey, all leading it. Owen was up there, Carter up there. Cole Brown has six pass, that is their seventh. Oyster River with two in that mix. Their third coming now. Dylan, Junior. Keen, sophomore. It would be Rowan and Gorski. And now we're starting to see some wave two runners as well. This is a wave two runner from Cole Brown here showing their team depth. Gavin. This looks like a wave two runner as well, Henry. Mixed in with a wave one runner of Zachary. So we're getting a quite the mix now as we start seeing a a good sized pack of them coming through at the one mile mark. A lot of these boys opting to take the grass instead of the gravel when they can. Just saw a pair of Oyster River working together. Now we got a pair of Cole Brown working together up the hill. And right behind them, another set of Cole Brown athletes working together. This course this early, absolutely great strategy. Get a buddy, make sure you're working hard, working together to get up these hills. Everyone coming into today with some different goals. First meet of the season. Some just looking to complete their first race. Others getting a PR. See what their training has looked like the last six months. It's been over six months since I've had the pleasure of calling a race. And that was indoor New England. It's been a while since we've had some competitive running. With that, we're going to go ahead and see what's happening over at our two mile mark. We expect some runners to be coming through there pretty soon. And it looks like we do have uh, Aiden Cox and Luke Kazik for Cole Brown in the shadows right now. 
They look like they're a bit faster than last year's pace set by Donnelly. Aiden on the left. Luke on the right. Those boys working together, they've definitely gained some distance on our second group of runners. Looks like we have Logan Mihalik, Andy O'Brien, Wyatt Mackey, Lars Hogney, Cardinal Sylvester, Oyster River second, I believe this is Owen Fleischer. as well as Co Brown's freshman. That was Jamie. Again, we're right near that two mile mark. You can see our sign is the two mile mark with Dylan passing us now. And right now we're starting to see a bit of overlap. Some people are at this two mile mark. Some people calling over there. Spirit of Co Brown's team. He's still on his first loop, but he's gonna make it just fine. A lot of mixing of these waves now as we hit the 12 minute mark. We've seen all of Co Brown's top seven. This is Keen of Oyster River. Again, sophomore, part of their top seven. John, another runner, Voice of Rivers, top seven. Come on, Rowan, good last mile. Rowan, wave one runner. And with, I would say, the majority of our wave one runners through, we gotta go get ourselves set up at the finish line because Aiden and Luke had an absolutely blistering pace where they're just looking to push each other and see who comes out on top. And we see our boys coming around the corner now. That is Luke and Aiden. Top two for Cole Brown and they are pushing each other hard. They are coming in nice and fast. Old record is going down right now in this dual meet. Luke takes it. Saw those two having great success last year in the state. Oftentimes going back to back like that within close proximity of each other. They really worked hard together as we see Co Brown's third and fourth rounding the hill. Again, last year with Luke and Aiden, they would battle back each meet. It would be a different winner between them depending on the course. This looks like Lars Hogney for Co Brown as their third. Logan Mihalik, Cole Brown, number four. And it looks like Wyatt and Carter, five and six to hold off Andy O'Brien, Oyster Rivers first. So we see two perfect scores today for Cole Brown. As Andy crosses close to his time of last year, I think about 10 seconds off of it. Just going again to show you how different these seasons are running a dual meet versus an invite, having the structure for the last six months versus not. This would be Jamie, our first freshman finisher today. Oyster Rivers number two and three. I believe we still have Owen Fleischer there. So that was Owen Fleischer and Dylan.
Again, that was Oyster River's top three. Cole Brown already crossing top five and then some. I believe we've seen seven of them. Again, with cross country, the top five places to score. Top seven factor in though, so that number six and number seven can displace the score. The score you get, the number you get is associated with what place you get. So for first place, you get one point, second place, two points. And again, you take the top five for your team, lowest score will win. As we see Oyster Rivers four and five coming down the hill now. And a good looking kick. Five, seven, eight. Keep in mind, I believe that was a wave two runner, whereas this is Keen. Yeah, that was Henry who finished first. So take that time that you're looking at, and subtract 15 seconds. So that can play a difference as well. He's factoring in large for Oyster River's top five. And again, this early on, your top seven is going to change a lot. It was John from Oyster River. Gavin, Cole Brown. And now we've got a little bit of a foot race here from Oyster River. A couple teammates battling. Cole Brown trying to get in the mix as well as we see these three dashing to the line. I believe that was Cole Brown squeaking out that. Very close looking finish though. And we can see that happens a lot with the boys where they'll kind of tail each other for the whole race. Find a mark to stick with them. Even if it's not their teammate, they're still working together in some regards. Boys giving it all they got as they come down this stretch. Another Oyster River finisher. That'd be Tane. Sophomore from Oyster River. Jacob Cowan. Well, Matthew, and again, typically this time of year, these boys all get to be running in an invite where they're surrounded by people going at this pay at their own pace. This here gets a little bit more challenging. You take your varsity runners and your JV runners and you have to mash them all together in a dual race, which is why we see such big gaps. And it makes it that much harder if you're running off in no man's land. What we do like seeing though is when we get four guys coming around the corner as we do now, we might get a couple individual battles, boys each pushing each other to try and get in. They're all working on their own PRs, all going for their own time but it definitely feels good if you can't catch that runner right at the end. As we saw there, that was a close one. McLean coming across. Frank.
more cold brown runners. Again, quite the scene with apple trees in the background. These boys finishing hard. Another pair of Oyster River coming down now. Again, it looks like a grass surface, but right underneath you do have some gravel, some rather larger rocks running across. And looks like we might have another battle at the top of the hill, Oyster River and Cole Brown, shoulder to shoulder. Looks like Cole Brown's pushed out a little bit, but Oyster River might still have a chance to respond. Followed closely by another pair of Cole Brown and Oyster River. Ideally, you don't necessarily have a kick right at the end. You exhaust yourself, but ultimately, you're always going to be sprinting this last downhill, as we said, as we saw with our lead runners as well. We've seen Oyster River versus Cole Brown today. Girls side, we saw Addison Cox all alone for Cole Brown, all out in front. Only able to push herself as we see another Cole Brown runner coming down. And a second right behind. Girls side, we saw Cole Brown with a scoring sweep. Boys side, we happen to see the same. Again, this season's very early. These two teams will be competitive the entire season. Anytime they meet up, they will be meeting up again on Cole Brown's home course. Boy side individually, we saw an absolute battle between Luke Kazik and Aiden Cox. Two of them have been running together their entire lives. They are cousins and both uh, children of the head coaches at Co Brown. Another Co Brown athlete. Another Cole Brown runner coming down the hill. Colin of Cole Brown. Oyster River sneaking down on the side. majority of our runners in. Once again, this has been NewHampshireCrossCountry.com powered by Runners Alley. Meet brought to you today by Demerit Hill Farms, which is right where we are. Beautiful apple orchard here in Lee, New Hampshire. Come on, they are open. Come pick some apples. This has been Cole Brown versus Oyster River, Oyster River's home course. And this has been the boys race. Start of 2020 looking strong.